Hey guys, how's it going? This is my beginner's guide to Pokemon Go. And in this video, we're going to be covering how to catch your first Pokemon, how to catch other Pokemon, how to track and find nearby Pokemon in Pokemon Go, where to find different types of Pokemon, how to get stuff from Pokestop, how to use eggs and incubators, how to level up and evolve your Pokemon, how to join a gym and battle other players, and how to level up your trainer. So let's get into it guys. So I'm not gonna go through all of the sign up and all that malarkey, that's pretty self-explanatory as you go, but then once you get thrown into the actual game, there is not much in the way of information to take you through it. And there's been a few questions thrown my way, so I thought I'd just make this beginner's guide and then at least I could just link them to this and say, go and check this out. So first up, how to catch your first Pokemon. So when you first start, you've got a choice of three Pokemon. Charmander, Bulbasaur and Squirtle. You can also choose Pikachu, all you have to do is walk away five times and then you will get the choice of Pikachu. All you do is click on the one you want to choose and then you throw the Pokeball at it. You throw the Pokeball by sliding your finger from the ball up towards the target. Now this can take a bit of getting used to but once you've cracked it you'll be catching Pokemon in no time. So let's move on to how to catch other Pokemon. So once you've picked your Pokemon, it's time to go on the hunt for some more Pokemon. But how do you track and how do you find the nearby Pokemon? Well, you find these Pokemon by physically walking around your area or where you live or wherever you want to look for Pokemon. You're going to want to be looking around popular areas. Don't go in the middle of fields and places like that. You want to be around shops, really public locations. That will be your best bet of finding the most amount of Pokemon. For example, I was in Asda's today and I found 12 different Pokemons. And that was just in one huge store. You won't need to stay glued to your phone. If a Pokemon is nearby, your phone will vibrate in your pocket. But if you do wanna track them down properly, there is a kind of paw system. And what this does, if you look on the image on the screen, there will be one, two, or three paws. One paw being the closest, three paws being the furthest away. For example, if you've got a Pokemon that's three paws away and you walk in a direction and it goes down to two paws, you're heading in the right direction. If it doesn't, turn around, try a different direction. Remember guys, pay attention in where you're going. So once you've found the desired Pokemon that you wish to catch, you complete the procedure what you did in the first time by swiping the Pokemon up towards the Pokemon. Now you want to hit the Pokemon on pretty much on its head. If you hit, the, hit it either side, you may or may not catch it, but the best possible outcome is if you hit it directly on the head. You may wonder why some Pokemon, after you've caught them, will reappear on the screen. Well, that's because some Pokemon really don't want to be caught. If, once you've caught them, they can get out of the Pokeball. And when you get to a bigger level and you're going after the bigger Pokemon, you'll find this happens a lot more often. You can tell this by if it's got a green circle, then you should have no problem capturing it. If it's yellow, it's a kind of a 50-50 chance. And if it's a red ring, then that's the most difficult to catch and you will most likely take a good few efforts to try and capture that Pokemon. You're most likely to capture these Pokemons by using more powerful Pokeballs and Berry. More than one person can catch the same Pokemon, so if you're going around with your friend and you both see the Pokemon, don't worry guys, you don't have to fight to get that Pokemon, you will both be able to get it. And if you don't fancy walking around all the time, then you have got lures which will bring Pokemon to you. For example, got the incense which will burn for 30 minutes and it will lure the Pokemons to your location. So if you don't fancy going out for a little walk, then that is your best bet. You get two of these to start with in the game and you can buy more with in-app in -app purchases, but we'll get to the items later on. Where to find different types of Pokemon. Each geographical area has specific different types of Pokemon. Some more difficult to find than others so if you keep bumping into the same sort of pokemons don't worry you just need to get out of that area and try somewhere else you're most likely to find water pokemons by water or in the evenings coming on to dark you're more likely to find the poison and the fairy type so you don't want to be going out at the same time to the same places all the time because you will run into the same pokemon you want to vary your places vary your time and that's the best way to get different types of pokemon how to get stuff from Pokestops. Pokestops are set in landmarks around your area. These will be very public, very accessible places. They should never be locked and it will be somewhere that is open to the public. For example, 
a historic landmark, a park, or something along those lines. So they should never, they should always be accessible. Now this is where you collect stuff, like eggs, crystals, and other cool stuff that you can play with throughout the game. You have to be within a certain range, get stuff from the Pokestop, and when it is in range, it will come up as blue on your screen. All you do is click on it, and then it'll open up with a circle of the image of the Pokestop where you are. Now, to access what is in the Pokestop, all you have to do is swipe the circle. It will spin around and release whatever goodies it has to offer. It'll also tell you something cool about the area where you are. Once you've taken the items from the Pokestop, it will now turn purple, and it won't turn blue again until you're able to use it, which usually takes about 5-10 to 10 minutes. So now you've got items, how do you use them? This is a game where you need items and items really do help, whether it's to catch Pokemon or heal them. Like a lot of games that are out at this moment, there is in-app purchases so you can actually buy these with real money. A lot of people don't like that kind of practice, but I can see a lot of people handing a lot of money over to save a bit of time and money. But all of these can be acquired at Pokestop without purchasing. So. There's two sort of items you can get, capture items and recovery items. Obviously capture help you catch the Pokemon, recovery help your Pokemon that you have, and heal when they're in battle. For example, a capture item would be incense, where you put it down and it attracts more Pokemon to you for 30 minutes, or poker eggs, which can hatch into new Pokemon. Which leads us on to our next part, poker eggs and incubators. So as you're going to Pokestop, you will pick up a few eggs on the way, now, these eggs are to be put into incubators. You've got an unlimited amount of incubators, so don't worry, you don't have to collect them, but you do have to collect the eggs. And the eggs come in different rarities. The rarer the egg, the better the Pokemon. But, once you've put the egg into the incubator, you have to walk from 2 up to 10 kilometers, depending on the rarity of the egg that you've put in the incubator. While you do this, that app has to be open. You can't have it on the lock screen and you can't have the app closed, you need it open while you're walking, so walking 10 kilometers with your phone op open will drain a lot of battery, so I suggest getting an external power source. But once you have reached the required distance, your egg will hatch into a Pokemon which you will then own. How to level up and evolve your Pokemon. So as a lot of people know, Pokemon evolve into more powerful Pokemon, or different variants of the same Pokemon. But Pokemon Go is quite different to the previous Pokemon titles on how you evolve them. So what you have to do to level up and evolve your Pokemon is catch duplicates of the same Pokemon. These duplicates carry candies, and candies are what you use to evolve your Pokemon, as well as Stardust. But there's plenty of Stardust, it's more the candies that you have to find. Once you've got the candies from the Pokemon that you've caught, you can then transfer the Pokemon, or any other Pokemon, which will you, which you will receive candies in return, but make sure it's not a Pokemon that you want because you will not get it back. Candies for certain Pokemon don't work for another type of Pokemon, so they are specific to that type. So when you have enough candies to evolve your Pokemon, it will not only evolve its physical form, but the CP of your Pokemon will also increase. You can actually increase the CP of your Pokemon without evolving, but this will also use candies and Stardust. So guys, that is it for part one. Join for part two, where I'm gonna explain how to join a gym and battle other players. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to check out the description for part two.